you. Uh, my name is Maciej. I'm the founder and CTO of TURN. And today I'm going to talk about XBI. XBI is the standard we are, are working on that primarily focuses on communicating between different virtual machines. So if we have an EVM virtual machine installed on one parachain, we would like to enable it communication with all of the other pallets on the remote parachains and also to translate between uh, the environments of uh, WASM virtual machine, EVM virtual machine, that also lets us to uh, specify all of the metadata that is necessary for XCM operations to function in, the, uh, in a good way, but also goes a bit deeper into the uh, callback system, so we have a consistent standard way of not only submitting the execution to the remote chain, but also receiving the notifications of delivery and uh, results. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard about TURN, we like to be seen as the uh, hosting uh, platform for smart contracts, and we don't really discriminate between Solidity and Inc. developers. We provide the uh, SDK that allows to build the cross-chain uh, cross smart contracts in both of those languages. And we would like developers to work on the primitives that also offer the fair self execution. So when you're a uh, developer on a single ledger chain, the fair safe mechanism is really something that you already get used to by safe, by safe, uh, fair safe, sorry. I mean that the, uh, when you bundle together multiple calls that would happen throughout the execution of the smart contracts, you don't want to end up in a dirty state meaning that, for example, if a three calls out of four and the third one runs out of gas, you don't want to see uh, your smart contract in a, in a dirty state where uh, some side effects has been left already on the blockchain. So what we do in turn, we elevate the concept that uh, developers are already familiar from the uh, single ledgers developing smart contracts. We elevate them now to the cross-chain realm and to additionally incentivize sustainable growth of smart contract ecosystems, we take an advantage from being able to design completely new ecosystem rules. So we want smart contract developers that build with TURN uh, to give them sustainable way of remunerating them for smart contracts. So one way how we build it in is we feed back the loop all of the gas fees that the smart contracts would generate back to the original autos. And then on top of it, we are designing the token economics that would initially incentivize the healthy growth of smart contract ecosystem when we also want to have a little DAO-like community that will say which smart contracts are very important for the uh, community to... Uh, sorry. Uh, for the community to uh, focus on building and community can express which smart contracts should be additionally incentivized from, uh, from inflation. Since June, we are launched to uh, Rococo and we're also working on some slick user interface that allows all of the users to build in cross-chain transactions by uh, simply drag and drop like fashion, where all of the targets that are already connected to Rococo parachains should be available there as the uh, target. And you can submit a transaction to the Turn protocol, uh, which is in a trustless way proving all of the incoming messages from the remote parachain. So uh, security is a very important concern for Turn. All of the incoming messages, their inclusion is being verified by uh, publicly verifiable light clients. So for example, for incoming messages, assuming Turn is installed on Polkadot, incoming messages from other relay chains like Kusama, we're able to verify using light client that is based on uh, reading the grandpa finality proofs. Upon verifying inclusion, we then proceed with decoding an event. Uh, so we compare the values from the incoming event with the values that the uh, user source developers has submitted. And it goes on and on. So this particular part of TURN is similar to multiple adaptive uh, bridging protocol. 
uh, that is adaptive to multiple consensus system. So we need to make sure to make it right, uh, to analyze a little status quo of the current bridging solution. Most of them really work on the basis of multiple parties agreeing and attesting whether the incoming transaction from the remote blockchain is correct or not. Uh, those multi-signature parties can be either open or closed, meaning that either you can essentially have enough of stake to participate in the consensus of a particular bridge protocol and be one of the valid validators that would be in control on signing on the correct attestations. Or probably the easiest setup of a bridge protocol is where you have closed, federated, nominated parties that uh, aren't uh, really meant to change. We saw a couple of, uh, couple of problems on the past years uh, where some of the bridge solutions got exploited. So the three categories there that we can divide is uh, the exploit based on really the collusion factor. So when there is a low factor of collusion, uh, it's essentially possible to take over the control over the validators attesting validity of incoming transaction throughout the bridge. So we saw it happening with the Ronin hack, uh, where an attacker was able to take over the control over a node that would hosting four validators, and only five of the validators were enough to take over the control over the uh, bridge. And then the attacker was able to collude one additional party and took over the control over the bridge, withdrawing the funds of uh, total worth of Ethereum more than 600 million at the time. The other part of the uh, exploit is connected to just simply buggy implementation. So open source developers, while you open source the solution, open source developers are having an eye on, on your code base. Uh, and uh, we saw many exploits also connected with it, one of them being an uh, exploit of a torchain uh, bridge where they were bridging to Ethereum and an attacker was able to wrap the original Ethereum smart contract and its own smart contract. Uh, caused the override loop of the, uh, that caused the uh, vault transfer to then withdraw the funds of the total worth of, uh, in assets of 5 million. You can protect yourself from the uh, bug implementations and hackers exploiting your open source by closing uh, the implementation, by making it closed source, but it really breaks the properties you would expect from blockchain when you can, as a user, publicly verifiable that all of the traffic that goes through the bridge is uh, intact. XCM is really uh, on a different level of security. All of the XCM messages are governed and protected by the uh, grandpa finality consensus. Uh, most of the uh, total value of Polkadot network is currently staked. You have 20,000, more than 20,000 nominators that can vote on more than 2,000 active validators. So the security and the degree of decentralization is, is uh, very much in place. Uh, where XBI, the uh, topic of today's thought, fits into XCM is uh, adding additional standard to a uh, XCM transact. So XBI sits inside the uh, transact operation mechanism. And XCM is designed to connect all of the, all of the parachains. The, uh, it comes with its own virtual machine that, Steve, uh, that the use of Steve showed on the, uh, on the previous talk. Uh, but it's really very generic, and the, uh, uh, it should stay like this in order to connect all of the, uh, all of the parachains. Where XBI shows to be, uh, we would see useful, is adding the additional standards over the uh, transact, where originally in the XCM transact you can essentially pass any call dispatch without having the full awareness over whether the destination chain has installed the, uh, the call that you are dispatching via transact. Uh, also what we, we would like to see is a consistent way of receiving the, essentially the callbacks, the notification of uh, delivery and execution, either, either correct or wrong one. And this is also what XBI adds uh, to XCN transact. It allows developers and users of, uh, of XBI 
to specify the uh, metadata uh, that shows all of the necessary timeouts that you will receive the notifications, uh, but also goes deeper into specifying all of the specific XBI orders. So we focus primarily on making sure that the orders of, uh, of calls on WASM contracts palette and EVM palette can essentially talk to each other. So once you create the call from EVM, it can be uh, dispatched then and being targeted to another environment on WASM and the other way around. And we also construct all of the, uh, all of the queues and messaging system that would uh, pass the messages back and forth. Uh, it's flexible. We use the custom encoding uh, to encode all of the uh, all of the incoming XBI messages, and the custom encoder really allows us to. Uh, it doesn't enforce all of the parachains to be aware of all of the possible XBI orders. So, uh, whereas. XCM is essentially rolling out the new versions. All of the parachains should upgrade to the new versions. With XBI, there is not such requirement. So for example, two parachains can agree to use some specific uh, custom functionality that would be only available for, for those two parachains to communicate. And the other parachains don't necessarily need to be aware if they receive such a XBI order that they can't understand, it will automatically decode to the unknown order. Uh, and it's important to mention that the works on XBI format uh, is funded by Web3 Foundation and will conclude with a PSP uh, Polkadot standard proposal that we would hope will further adoption and integration by other parachains to uh, switch into XBI or perhaps use it next to uh, standard XCM messages. Uh, the next slide goes a little into lifecycle, which essentially overviews that we uh, pack all of the XBI messages into a transact and packs not only the calls but also all of the notifications and acknowledgements of delivery and execution and transmit them back to uh, the source parachain that's uh, created the orders. We develop a palette that uh, controls all of the queues. We try to offload as much as possible from the uh, runtime. So the management over the queues has been done by the off-chain workers that controls all of the timeout mechanisms, controls the check-in queues, controls the checkout queues for notifications and results. Uh, and if the destination parachain is, uh, is the target parachain, then dispatches the, uh, dispatches the result on one of the uh, hooked on pallet. Uh, that has been defined to something that we call XBI portal. So this is very much XBI portal uh, is able to be configured with multiple different, uh, let's call it traits, uh, multiple different traits expressing which specific XBI orders would be handled by, by the parachain. And once again, this is in design of XBI format messaging is that not all of the parachains will have all of the traits uh, configured. So for example, we can say that, okay, WASM on my parachain is there, EVM isn't. I have RML palette for multi-asset transact. I have palette asset for multi-asset uh, multi transact. And potentially more and more XBI orders uh, that we would hope to see being proposed by other parachain teams. And where it goes back a little to uh, the origins of the uh, presentation, where TURN uh, fits into the XBI is we'll be using XBI to communicate uh, with all of the parachains. That gives us a consistent standard. And on the slide here, we see the uh, SDK that we're working on uh, for developers to build the cross-chain smart contract. So uh, the types has been taken from the uh, XBI, they're compatible with XBI, 
So we see it's possible to just create the account IDs that will be uh, compatible with EVM, so 20 bytes with other pallets, 32 bytes, and they all can be mixed up in the flow uh, that defines a smart contract that is cross-chain. So essentially we have one smart contract that defines all of the flow that should happen on the remote targets while giving the guarantee that all of the execution will be uh, by turn guaranteed to be a fail safe. And we additionally uh, expose the function that lets you to specify the uh, XBI metadata so uh, developers are more in control into how the timeouts uh, would, actually, would actually function. So they can specify when uh, is the timeout of delivery, when is the timeout of execution, and uh, we see it being useful for, for use cases. So we want to just uh, give the power to developers to uh, simplify the, uh, the good use cases for cross-chain cross -chain applications in general and uh, give them overview and a good control over the uh, flow. It's going to be the last slide. Thank you very much for tuning in. So I previewed the SDK that is coming. Uh, we'll be releasing it shortly. Uh, also the user interface that's also coming. If you'd like to hear more, uh, discuss about potentially extending the XBI standard, if you already see some messages missing there. Uh, feel free to reach me out on the on the conference. You can see how the XBI uh, progresses by just simply observing, either tuning into our channels, we are on Telegram and Discord, or just simply observing the uh, Web3 Foundation grant proposal. The number is 903. Thank you very much. <laughs>